Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Wayne Scott series. If you remember in the last video, we got this unit built and installed. So if you didn't see that one, go back and check that out because I'm going to be doing the same exact thing today on this big wall right here. Now the difference here is we've got an obstacle. We got this outlet right down here and I'm going to show you how you can move that. Also talk about some other options. I'm going to move mine just because it's usually the easier way to handle it. But we're going to build this unit. And then we gotta wrap this bullnose corner. So that's my goal for today. I'll see how far I can get with this today, but let's get right into it. So let me explain to you the situation real quick that we've got here. Basically what I've got after I find my panel dimensions, I have a vertical style that's gonna basically split this electrical outlet right in half. One thing I could do is, since it splits it right in half, I could leave it in this location and then just build out a box around this. Now I have done that, especially when it's like a gang box of a bunch of wires I don't wanna move and there's not enough slack in the, the line. So that's an option. Um, one other option you could do, let's say this outlet landed right in the middle of this. Then you could just cut a hole in this and pull the outlet through and place it on there. And that has happened, but it's very rare. So typically what I'll do is I'll just move the box. Now I will say, if you don't feel comfortable messing with this stuff, then don't do it. It's not hard, it's not scary, but just get a professional to do it. I will also say too, if you're doing this for somebody and you're not covered with electrical um, legally, then don't do this because if something happens, you're gonna be the one that has to pay the price. So if you're gonna have to move one of these, let the person know they can either move it themselves or they can have an electrician move it for them. Since I'm doing this in my own house, I'm just gonna go ahead and move it. Now in the process of moving this, what I need to determine is what side of this outlet the stud is on. Is it on the left side or the right? So I can just take my stud finder and then run it across here. And we can see that not only, let me check that again. Not only is it on the left side, it looks like there's a double stud right here. So my only option is to move it this way. And that's good because most of the vertical style is actually gonna be on the left side anyways. So that worked out really good for me. What I need to do next is determine how much slack is in the line and how much I need to move it over. So if I'm moving it over, let's see. Because sometimes, so I'll mark this, so you can get a visual on it. That's where it's gonna be. Now I need to bring this over enough so it doesn't affect my trim piece that's gonna be in here. And I know my trim piece is going to total 7 eighths of an inch. So I'll have my trim running there and I'll just connect that so you can see that as well. That's where my panel molding is going to end. So now I know I need to get this box at least somewhere over here where I have at least some kind of distance there. I don't want to be right next to the, the trim. So what I'll do, I'll take this. This is a remodel box. It has these toggle bolts on it. You can see them right here. These are going to grab the drywall. They're kind of like these wings. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out how far away I want to put that. Let's say about right there. That looks like a good enough reveal for me. And then I'll roughly just mark this right here. And I'm outlining that so I know what to cut with my little drywall tool here. That looks like it got some water on it at some point. But before I cut that, I wanna pry this off and see how much slack I'm working with because I don't know if I can even move it that far yet. First thing I'm gonna do is take these screws out. Actually, the first thing I'm gonna do is turn the breaker off. I already did that. And since I know this thing is nailed in to this direction, I know those nails are right there. So I'll get this pry bar in here and I'll just pry that box off. And now it comes out of that stud. And one cool trick is once you get it out, there's those nails in there. You can push up against them and pry them off. Hey, you see that nail right there? What you can do is you can just push it up against that stud and it'll pop out the backside of this original blue box that is holding the outlet. Because I'll just push back 
towards that stud and then those nails will pop out. There's a staple up there where this is stapled into the stud. Don't mess with that. Just work with the slack that you have. And what I find is that you usually don't need to move it that much. Usually it just needs to move over, like I said, like right here. Not much at all. So I, I know if I put it in there, I can feel, I mean, there's plenty of slack there to get there. And I can even show you from the front side. So now that we can see how much slack we have on the line, and you can see how I can move that over here. The reason I left this on is so I could show you like where this is gonna be. Normally I would just take it off and not cut the box open like that. So now that I know it's gonna fit, we're gonna move it over about that much where I had it because it looks like all the contents of this outlet will be inside of the box and that's what we want. And just since I made that rough mark earlier, I just wanna have a nice plumb line to index off. We want this to be the exact same height as the rest of the outlets so it matches the rest of the room and that's a nice right angle for us to work off then I can really mark this now which it wasn't really off too much it's actually pretty good so what I'm going to do I'm just going to connect this line and then we'll take our little drywall tool and cut this out now this piece of drywall right here you may think that's pretty thin, but as long as we have something for these wing nuts to grab, then we're good. We just gotta be careful with this. We don't wanna bust it out. So we'll get this started. So we're gonna fit really good right there. Put these little tabs through, bring our wires through and screw it back up. Not too crazy, cause it's actually pulling the drywall back there. And now this thing is in there. You can see it's in there nice and tight pulling on it with the pliers. All of our wires are in the box. Everything that's cut is in the box. The sheathing on the wire ends right where it ended. That's another thing you need to think about because you don't want exposed wires in the wall. So don't you won't be able to move these things too far depending on how the electrician wired the house, but generally you can move them enough in my experience is what I found. So there you go, that's how to move a box for the wainscot. And then if you're gonna put this back on, you just rewire it how you found it. And these I'm going to replace because they had paint all over them from the previous owner of this house. But I'll go ahead and just put it back together because I need to turn the breaker back on. Not too bad to move one of those. Probably took me five minutes even with the explanation to the camera. So pretty quick process. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this wall, but first I need to turn the breaker back on and make sure everything's good to go. All right, so the breaker came back on and we are good to go on that outlet. I got my laser set back up again and I got it shot right here level with the unit that we built in the last video and hopefully you've seen that because we're gonna be pretty much doing the same thing for this big wall and I'm not going to re-explain everything. I'm just gonna get to work. But the main focus of the rest of this video is going to be this bullnose right here, wrapping this bullnose corner with the wainscot. So we'll get into that, but first I need to get these units built and I'm gonna measure off that little thin piece right there between the door and the wall, the door casing rather. That's gonna be a solid piece. Same thing on that side. I'm just gonna put a solid piece of one by rip down to whatever dimension that is, the width. Now when it comes to these thin strips up against the casing, these kind of filler pieces, all I'm concerned about is how tight it is up against the casing back here. 
I'm not worried about the gap up against the wall because the wainscot unit that's put in after this will cover all that up. So as long as I'm tight up against the casing, we're good to go. And I actually make these thin strips about an eighth shorter for that purpose that I can just pry on them and push them up against the casing and knowing that gap will be covered later. And one other thing I wanted to point out real quick before I move on is in the first video where I shot the laser at this wall, people were saying it was really thick. I don't know why, but it looks really thick on camera. Here in real life, it's a thin laser line. So it must be some kind of camera trick that's going on here. If you remember from video number two, we marked these lines right here on this outside bullnose corner. And we did that with this tool. This is a bench dog bullnose trim gauge, perfect tool for marking outside bullnose corners. And it gives you a 5 8 mark right here. So the space between here and here is 5 8 of an inch. Now that's important because this thin strip right here, we need to know the dimension of that. And that tells us it, it's 5 8 so this thin strip right here will be one piece and that'll be ripped down to five eighths of an inch. Now for the whole wainscot wrap, what I want you to think of this as is think of it as a gigantic baseboard, like a 40 inch tall baseboard that's going to be wrapped around a bullnose corner. Well, you would just do that on your miter saw, but since there's no miter saw that's going to cut a 40 inch tall baseboard, that means we have to miter each component separately. So we have our top rail, we're going to miter that right to this line. We have our vertical style. We're going to miter that ripped on the table saw right to this line. And then our bottom rail, we're going to miter that right here to this line. Every time, same thing for this side, same thing for this side over here. And then when they come together, they'll meet that thin strip in the middle and we'll glue it up and it'll come together nice. Now all I have to do to get the measurements on the top and bottom rails here is stretch my tape out against that top rail and then to this outside corner over here to that pencil line that I just spoke of. Then we'll do the same thing for the bottom rail. That will be our links for the top and bottom rail on this unit. I'm not even going to talk about vertical styles because we discussed that in depth in the last video. For this we'll go 125 and 9 sixteenths. Yeah, we'll go the same. Same thing top and bottom. To cut the top and bottom rail, I'm going to actually bevel the miter saw. We'll get this out of our way so we can lay the saw blade down to 22.5 degrees. And 22.5 degrees times four will get us our 90 degree wrap. Now I'm going to cut the top rail right now, but when I do the bottom rail, it's the same exact process. So for the sake of being redundant, I'll just show you this one and you can just know I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom rail. Now this piece is kind of damaged, so I'm actually going to cut a lot of this out. So we'll go ahead with our 22.5 degree miter right here. Since I have this 22.5 degree miter, I'm actually going to use that in the corner. If you remember with the window jam, when I built the casing, the inside window jams, they all had that bevel to them so I could bypass any unevenness. I'm going to do the same thing in the corners over here. That way I get a nice tight fit up against that unit that's already there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this back down that hallway, spin it around, take my measurement and make this same degree cut. And that will actually end up over here on the top row. You'll see what I mean. So we'll go 120, what did I say? So for the top and bottom rail, I used the miter saw to give me those 22 and a half degree cuts, but obviously for the longer pieces, the vertical styles, I'm not gonna be able to do that on the miter saw. So I just set my table saw to 22.5 right there. And then I can run these through and it'll give me that beveled edge for the bull nose and also the relief cuts that I'm doing on the inside corners. And this piece right here will become the outside vertical style for my small unit over there on that wall. And I have to make it to where it's three and a half on the face. So what I do to accomplish that is I just rip it from a small piece of one by six.
It's always a good feeling when you've got the two outside styles on because then you can just space or block the middle ones and you know you're good to go. And this is when you're really thanking yourself for making a stop block to cut these vertical styles like we did in the last episode. Because I don't have any gaps here. These things are all tight. You can even hear the, the friction there. And this isn't even screwed in yet. I'm going to raise it up to the line to match the one we installed in the last video, that first unit over there. And then we'll just raise this up to fit right there with it. And you can see our plug outlet has been moved properly. We've got plenty of clearance for any panel moldings or anything like that. And this hole right here is going to get covered by the tempered hardboard. We'll go right there. I want to make sure that I've got pressure over there to the left before I shoot this because I'm going to have to deal with it later if it's not all the way seated up against that unit. Over here on our bull nose corner, we could see our pencil line that we need to be on. And if we push our unit up against that, it shows you we are right on our pencil line. We need to do the same thing for this unit that's going to join right here. We are good to go. We have a nice level build here and I could go ahead and install this. And since this piece right here is going to be one long strip, it's not going to be multiple pieces like the units. All I have to do is take my tape measure, hook it onto the bottom, and then measure to the top. And we're about 36 and a half. I got this piece of one by six scrap here. It's just over 36 inches. So I'll cut this to 36 and a half. And then it doesn't have to be perfect for this because remember the whole bottom section of this unit so to speak is going to get covered by uh, base molding and once again we'll come to the table saw over here and go to 22.5 lock it down you can see the tilt of our blade and we're ready to rip this bull nose piece so there you can see our mired cut right here and just to be clear, we're measuring from this point, which is the heel of the miter. We're going to measure 5 eighths over this way. So I'm lined up right there on my mark. We're going to push this through and get our piece. So here's the reason I left these two ends loose, because now I can finesse this little strip in here that we just ripped down. And this is going to be a little hard to do one handed, but I just want to show you this. This fits right in there. We'll push that down and it has a perfect spot to slide in. Now I'm going to try something different on this. Usually I would just brad nail this, but I'm going to try to use those little spring clamps and see if that can help me out. If you don't know the spring clamps I'm talking about, I've used them pretty often recently because I haven't had them for that long but are these spring clamps right here. They separate with these pliers and when you release the pliers, you can clamp them onto things. And the way they hold is they have very sharp tips. And some people have been wondering, does that leave a big gash in the wood? And from my experience, it is no more than a pin nail. So just a tiny little pin nail, really easy to fill. All this stuff right here will get filled from the nail holes, obviously. And then we'll go over the whole thing really lightly with an orbital sander after we fill in everything to just get everything flush. So these are no worries as far as the little holes that they leave. So I'm going to give them a shot. All right. 
So as long as I'm flush up top, I should be good to go because the bottom is going to get covered by that base molding like I mentioned. I'm still shocked at how much pressure these little spring clamps have. <laughs> it looks pretty funny, but hey, it's good to go. Hey, it may look kind of funny, but it worked out for me. It's doing its job. These little suckers are holding tight. And I guess the advantage of using these over brads is that you can take them off and adjust it. Once you shoot a brad into this, it is pretty much there. You're not going to get it out unless you pry it out, and that's a mess. So kind of weird, but I'll take it. It works. I actually still got to shoot the rest of the nails into it, but I'm going to wait until that bull nose dries. This whole side of the room is framed up, ready to go. Now we got this large wall right here, which is straightforward. It's just a big version of the small wall over there that we started on. And then we got the one you've all been waiting for the window right here. And that one will probably be last, but you know what will be dead last the door casing. I'm, I'm still holding out on that door casing. So I'll have to stay to the end to see if I ever even put that on. I'm kind of considering just leaving it off just to, just to irritate people. So that's going to do it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below. And I just want to say I appreciate the people who signed up for the memberships. It truly helps with the production of these videos. I put a lot of time into these and I really appreciate you guys who see the value in it and give a small donation. So thank you so much to the members and I will see you guys on the next video. Take care.